Indian classical music has uh, a raga at its core. The raga is not just a tune, not just a song, but it's a whole melodic structure. We will open with a small composition in a rag called Gaud Sarang. It's a composition set in a 16 beat cycle called Teen Ta. sincerity and involvement has the ability to heal, uh, has the ability to you know, make people uh, aware of a different dimension of their existence sometimes. So that kind of also makes you know, giving us different perspectives of life. Uh, and largely the, the fact that Indian classical music comes uh, is, is the word classical, there is a reason there is a word classical in it which means it's, a, it's an art form that requires a lot of rigorous uh, discipline and when one is required to go into something with a lot of discipline, uh, the artists develop, uh, if they are prone to it, uh, develop a certain kind of calm, certain kind of control over it. <laughs> how uh, they understand the music, how they involve themselves in their music and the raga itself has to become one with the musician. So there's an element of dissolving of the artist's ego in a way where you completely merge with the song that you're singing, the raga that you're singing and I think that element is what people describe as the, the spiritual element in classical music which is dissolving of the artist's ego into that discipline of that music, into the into the raga, into the personality of the music, and I think that when it comes across to a listener, to a recipient who is ready to to feel that, I think that's when that's why music is always an exchange between the artist and the listeners. Yeah. We take turns. So once, uh, as uh, for this uh, gamut of this uh, concert, he just uh, started, and then he uh, uh, performed and uh, sang a de few definite phrases, which are common to this raga. And then Jay improvised on it. I improvised on it further, and then we come into a composition where the tablas join in, and then we have a dialogue within the same thing. It's always a dialogue is happening between the artist or the artist and the audience. Yeah, and and it's spontaneous. That's the, that's the main it's thing. Spontaneous. The next time, if you play it again, the same thing will happen. classical music is defined in two ways. One is a very concrete rhythm which the tabla shows us, the percussion shows us, which is uh, beats, the structure, very clear cut. But there is also an element of abstract rhythm where, I mean, the notes are common between all ragas. It's, I give, when I teach my students, I give them an analogy of, of human beings. I mean, all of us have the same features on our faces. We all have two eyes, you know, and, uh, of ears and the nose and the mouth, everybody has the same features, but all of us tend to have a unique, you know, everyone is unique because of the way the, the color, the texture, the curvature of all of these features are, are unique to every person. So, um, very similar to that, ragas, although they have the same notes, 
are very different, each raga differs from the other just by the way in which those notes are sung and that's where the abstract rhythm comes in where a single phrase like for instance in Gaur Sarang Pa the fifth and the second note Pa Re this has a particular A Re this is a movement in Gaur Sarang for this note for this you know for this phrase for instance so okay. if if in another rag, if I change this interval to pa re, this the same two notes, but they're sung in a different timing and a different curvature. That would that's a different raga altogether. Mm -hmm. And so now all three of us have studied this raga. We've studied that these are the features of this raga. This is how the pa re goes. There are the other notes, and that's how those intervals are. What are the phrases that and how they link together? That's what we know. So we know how to draw the face of this particular person called God Saran. Mm -hmm. But then that face can be a happy face, it can be a sad right. face, and there can be uh, infinite in emotions even within that. Right. Happiness yeah. is not just one happiness, there are so many shades of happiness. Sorrow is not just one sorrow. So, and so there's every time we sing that raga, although the phrases are the same, the emotions are different, with subtle variations of those, we bring, bring about so many different aspects of Basically, the raga reveals the same raga on different days, different times when you played it, reveals itself in different ways depending on the moment. concerned there's, there's a certain discipline like I mentioned there's a discipline to how the music moves so there's a small introduction of the raga which we did before the tablas uh, joined yeah. and then we once the tablas came in we, we sang the actual composition the way it was composed about a couple of hundred years ago and then we went on to develop the raga explore the raga through the lens of that composition but in a very modern format because a yeah. couple of hundred years ago when the composition was made it was not to be meant to be played with a few tennis <laughs> of classical music it's also very fluid at the same time mm. so then it can incorporate any another uh, a person can come with a saro then come sit with us and it will be a concert yeah, yeah. that, so that fluid it is there so he or she is just joining in uh, the interpretation of that raga again that's yeah. another interpretation and then we all move in that structure together so the opening alap then the composition then exploring the raga further through the lens of that composition and then we go into the, the, the focus shifts from purely melodic to slightly more rhythmic where we are doing more playing more with the rhythm and then it goes into a much faster structure which we call tans. So then it's kind of building in tempo, building in crescendo, building in its excitement and the, 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 uh, how, how big those ideas are. You know, starting from the beginning we just take a few notes and but by the end of it we are like flying through the On, yeah, that will help. Uh, the tuning, like this, is showing the tonic D, right? So then I tune the sitar, just turning the knob just like it. Uh -huh. Sometimes these knobs could be really tight, so that's where I have to use this one okay. to tune it, you know, that it gives you a little bit of help. 
because it becomes really tight. And I tune it according to the raga, uh, what um, we are performing. This can vary. This strings can uh, the tuning can vary. Mm. Those are the strings that are inside of the outer strings. There are two layers of strings on the sitar. They're tuned oh. to the so scale and they vibrate. Yeah, they vibrate oh, yeah. in sympathy. That's a sympathetic vibration. They don't. Mm. They, you never play when them. When the frequencies match, they vibrate. We don't never play.